So this is Altman, uh, which I named uh, after Robert Altman, the director, and particularly his penchant for overlapping dialogue. Uh, if you've heard any, heard, yeah, heard is good, heard any of his films. Uh, a lot of them depend on this idea of sort of dialogue that sort of talks past one another and, and over itself. Um, the basis of this patch is uh, you have two parallel uh, granular modules. And on the front page, we have control over their parameters, size, position, uh, density, texture, and pitch speed. Um, and then there's a final control here called sensitivity. And the sensitivity has to do with the fact that the output of these two granular modules are uh, envelope followed first to get a CV analysis of their amplitude. And then they're comparated. And the idea here is that whichever one of the granular modules is louder at the moment uh, will be given priority they'll sort of uh, gate each other. Um, and you can use a fade element to make that smoother or more jarring, depending on what you want. Um, and so, you know, the, the uh, I feel like this is sort of weaponizing the some of the, the things that people complain about with the granular module. It sort of has this modulated quality to it and, um, you know, here that element opens up these opportunities for um, some really interesting interplay between the two granular modules because uh, they'll have different amplitudes at different moments. Um, so beyond that, uh, you can also sync any of these controls so that the first granular modules control controls both of them. And that's because there are uh, cases, I'll just show one off, uh, where... So in this case, I've synced the uh, size, the texture, and the pitch speed, uh, and I've left the position and the density uh, unsynchronized. And I've set the position of the second granular module um, about 200 milliseconds behind the first one. So you get these sort of echoes that fade in and out when then you know, the beats from the first granular module start to die out. Um, and we can, you know, unlock a couple of other things. Add some fade.
So, you know, the, the different controls will determine a lot about how the two granular modules sort of feed off of one another. The, the most important ones uh, being density, because density obviously controls how much sound a granular module produces, because it cuts off some of the grains. Um, the other is uh, texture, which adds an envelope to the granular modules, and, and size also has an effect on amplitude. Um, so does position, obviously, because if one is a delayed version of the other one, the position nod module, when the granular modules are unfrozen, works kind of like a delay, then you know the hit will have priority, but the echo might chop something else off. And so there are a lot of uh, fun ways that these two granular modules and the controls here can be used to sort of, you know, um, remix something. I, you know, I, I'm using this app on my phone that lets me create little drum loops that I just sort of toy around with. Um, but I, I think it's good for that sort of application. It can also work for more of a live instrument. Uh, let me just find one of the ones in here. We've got a kalimba. That's probably a pretty good example. And this is probably a good place for me to talk about one other feature that this has. The first granular module has a delay that's put in the feedback loop of the granular module. So if you want to turn that on or off, you just increase the feedback. Um, let's see if we can uh, give this some priority. There's one other control worth mentioning. Sorry. It's a, you know, I just sort of mess around with this patch and don't really think about what I'm doing. Now I have to explain it. Uh, there's this control called sensitivity. And what that does is it scales the output of the envelope followers to the comparator. So it makes them more or less intense as they go into this comparator and the comparator is trying to see uh, which envelope follower has the more intense output. So it's a, another way that you can sort of shape how the two granular modules um, interact with one another. So, you know, if you have a granular module that by its normal parameters should be louder, but you want it to, to have sort of a less uh, prominent role in the mix between the two, you can adjust its sensitivity. If you turn that down, uh, then the comparators will pay less attention to it or it'll peak above the other one less often um, because it'll just have a you know, a lower total amplitude. But there's a delay on the first granular module um, that goes up to four seconds. So we can make this quite long. Uh, and you can also turn it off because there's also a delay on well, there's not a delay. There's a feedback loop on the second granular module. So this doesn't really do a whole lot if you don't adjust the position control. But like I said, the position control is like a delay. So if you add in position, you can get a delayed sound out of this uh, granular module. Let's bring its sensitivity back up. Let's use, a, instead of a an octave below, let's do an octave up and we'll hear some cascading octave effects. Uh, and again, we can use that with a pattern. Here 
here's our regular sound. Uh, and one other, well, two other things. One is that you can see um, a visual representation of which granular module has priority. So this is granular one and this is granular two, and you'll see them switch back and forth depending on which one is being fed to the output. Um, so that's a sort of visual way to, to get a sense of what these controls are doing. The other element is that, uh, let me go, let me go, let me go into alt mode um, or auxiliary mode. And one thing to point out is that well, hold, you can freeze the the granular modules, one or the other. You can do that on the front page, right? We've got this freeze one and two, or you can do that versus, via the stomp switches. And then the right stomp switch affects both of them at the same time. But I'll point out if this one is frozen, these are flexi switches. So if you hold down, it's momentary, but if you tap it, it'll toggle the state. That goes for the push, the UI buttons here. Um, if you use the right stomp switch, it changes the state of both uh, granular modules. So you can do some interesting things with that. Uh, but let's just show off, uh, you know, that that frozen feature, because you can do neat stuff with that too. I think. So you get the idea you can freeze something and, and it'll have sort of a static sound, but also a static output, which means that the out, the sort of comparated moments will be consistent uh, depending on, you know, the output of the second granular module. So there, there's some fun ways that they can play off of one another. Um, you know, for me, uh, this patch is, is <laughs> sort of really transfixing, to be honest. You know, you might have seen me zoning out there. I switched the sound to tablas in the little pattern that I'm using. Um, you can find some really sort of spacey stuff. You can find some really neat ways of, um, you know, fragmenting, particularly, I think, drum loops or loops in general uh, work really well uh, with this patch. So. You know, it was something that, that I um, cooked up the other morning. I didn't really plan on doing any patching, but I woke up with this idea of these two granular modules sort of being comparated. Um, and it, it worked out better than I expected it to, weirder than I expected it to. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoy it. Have a good day. Take care. Mm -hmm.